Hi, we are Ben and MP and we have the dream of living on the ocean and traveling the world. In order to fulfill that, we bought our dream boat. But unfortunately, said boat was rotten and sinking. It's been three years now that we've been rebuilding it from the keel up. And today we're gonna be tackling many tasks such as plumbing system, painting our roof, fairing our roof, working with furniture and more. We really hope you enjoyed this episode and also our journey of transforming this boat from wreck to dream. And don't forget to subscribe. I am over here against the hull. What's this? Starboard hull in the head of the boat. This is the biggest head, the biggest shower room, toilet room. We have three of these boxes. I'm gonna put one in this toilet, uh, one in the one opposite by Anki and my room, and one by the sink in the galley. Why do we want these boxes and what are these boxes? Our sink is almost the same level as the water uh, level, which is why we're going to have to bring the grey water from the sink into one of these boxes. Same for the showers. So that's the two inlets over here. Let's see the big one, the shower, the small one, the sink. Then we have another hose here from the box that goes through a 750 gallon per hour pump straight up above the water line and throws it out just like a bilge pump. This is literally a small bilge pump in a box. We are going to find the ideal position for these three boxes in the two heads and the galley, which it gives us easy access to maintain it. Here will be the toilet, there's the cabinet, and here's the shower. So if we were to put it here under the toilet, it would be very hard to access. Same for the shower, very hard to access, and we will also be having a black water tank in here. Back in this little corner here, we do have the pump that's finished now. I mean, the pump was always finished, it was all finished. There is a little piece of marine grade plywood that has been screwed onto the little support I made and also all of it has been painted with an epoxy paint to keep it from rotting, to keep it nice and permanent, let's call it. Now all I need to do when we have the hoses ready, which is gonna be one of our next steps, is to fasten the box into place and then connect it to, well, that's not gonna go there. That's going exactly where I am now. So I'm technically sitting on a very small toilet and over there is gonna be the shower. Toilet, shower, and the sink. I am here under where the sink in the galley comes. I am also going to install one of these. I'm also gonna install, while I'm down here, a 24 volt, 5.5 gallon per minute fresh water pump and a tiny one litre accumulator. Very, very cute. We're gonna start with this for now and see where we're gonna expand, where we need to expand whether that be size of the accumulator, one pump, two pump, three pumps. This is what we're gonna go for now. And it's gonna go right against that wall and you can ignore the hosing for now. We will clarify that for you very soon. It's very quick to, inst quick to install. That's that in place. There is an inlet and an outlet. So we're gonna use this hose which comes directly from the tanks the four tanks that are actually under there. This is gonna go from this all the way to the other rooms. Also gonna be connected to the tap, but it's gonna be right on top of here. I'm very curious to see how this works. I've never seen one pre-made like this. This is in place now, just so it's not in the way. We had the box and we had to keep moving it backwards and forwards. Same as this. It's a nice rainy day to do all this stuff. When we start installing more of the sink and the water connections, you'll see this being put in use and how it actually works. But for now, it's in place, very cool. It has been a very long time since I've seen that big, where is it? That big shiny thingy in the sky. That means no more rain, hopefully. And uh, the prediction is it's not gonna rain for another week. Everyone's out working. They're fiberglassing over here. They're changing planks over there. And I, we can finish this roof. We can add varnish to this. We can do a lot of stuff. So we're really gonna try and get the most out of the sun and do outdoor stuff, epoxy stuff, varnish stuff, and at the same time also be working on all the plumbing through holes and so on, because we can also get the seeker flex in between the through holes. I'm so happy and thrilled that the sun is out and I'm overwhelmed because I want to get everything done ASAP before the rain comes again. Uh, it is lunch break now, and I'm gonna make the most of the lunch break. I've actually already started. I've got this, uh, Scotch Bright thingy 
And this for now has only been epoxy resin and I'd like to get a layer of polyurethane varnish on or at least two, maybe even three layers to get this nice and protected. It's hotter than I imagined and my jeans are destroyed anyway so I'm gonna turn them into shorts and then finish this and put a layer of PU on. ready. We're super happy about this. The whole idea behind this here, over there by the pilot house, we're gonna have furniture and if we didn't add any cover here, we're just gonna have the side of a furniture like a closed wall. This way we managed to use this space. We can keep, I don't know, coffee or condiments or anything as here is our galley. I still want to add a little maybe leather stripe here so you can hold things in place. I think this is still gonna look a lot nicer, but I'm already super happy with the round corners and with the whole idea behind it that we are using this space after all. This is looking absolutely insane. I'm happy with it. You might have seen the pot I chose was way too small for the brush, but we solved that anyway. While I was doing that, Nico's already prepping the superstructure roof for the first polyurethane uh, paint layer, which will be cool. We chose white for temperature reasons. We, it got very, very hot under or inside the superstructure inside the boat when it was sunny because the roof was so dark. Also at lunchtime or after lunchtime, you couldn't even stand on that wood anymore. So. A light color where it will at least reflect off a lot of the heat. Lots of you said it might reflect the sun into our eyes when we're navigating. It will have the anti-skid on, so it's gonna hopefully be less reflective, if you see what I mean, more matte, and we'll be able to use that to relax and drink a cocktail on. I've got this batch going on here. Hopefully we can get this all done in one go. I'm really curious to see how this goes. I've learned not to put too much thinner in. Thinner does make it kind of dry quicker and penetrate. However, it leaves lots of little air bubbles, which I also don't want. Alaska White, pass it over to Nico, who's got uh, the roller on a stick, and then uh, we should have a nice white roof soon.
That's always fun to watch. Anyway, this painting didn't go as smooth as I want. I don't know what happened with the catalyzer. It was leaving all these little air bubbles, even though I used a way less thinner. Anyway, whatever. Uh, I uh, used the paintbrush to go over it anyway, to just get all the bubbles out. And it's looking really good. It's only the first layer, so you can see a few little gray patches. And it's the second or even third layer are gonna go on. Uh, it's gonna look a lot smoother and a lot whiter. I think out of everything here at this boat build, I think painting is the one thing that I haven't got the hang of yet. Like, I don't know. I've seen people just paint with rollers and it's as smooth as anything. And I've just not figured that out. Don't know if it's the paints we're using, the brushes, the rollers. I've been tried it with everything. And that's one thing that I've always found hard. But uh, functional it is. We're gonna put as many layers of, as possible on here. Not that it's gonna start crisping and falling off, but just this is gonna be I'm hoping that we are going to abuse this roof, if you see what I mean. Stand on it, lie on it, I don't know, well, maybe put the, the, the tender on it, I don't know what. It's gonna be abused, that's what this roof is for. So I wanna at least have it nice and protected. But uh, yeah, it's catalyzing quite quickly, or drying quite quickly, so we might go over the second layer in about an hour. I don't know, it says about 15 minutes for the everything to evaporate and uh, 24 hours to dry, so with this heat in one hour, I might be able to just put another layer on. Yeah. So I got on this and I left a big boot print. So it's gonna be for tomorrow, which is unfortunate because I really wanted to get two layers on today. However, uh, I actually really didn't want to sand anymore. We're gonna to have to sand this down lightly just to get the top layer off, to get it gritty, and then we can paint it with a second layer tomorrow. <laughs> Meet us at the Annapolis Sailboat Show. We'll be at the Creators booth on these dates and time, packed with stickers, goodies, and free hugs. So come say hi. Looking forward to seeing you there. We are very fortunate to have another sunny day, which means the roof could be sanded down already just to make it a little rougher to adhere or to stick to the second paint. I never know if it's adhere or cohere. I would like to get two layers on today, which means we'll have to strategically lay out the paint so we can go over again without having to stand on the wet paint and then move over. That would be a miracle and we might just put one layer on depending on how it goes. So MP is going to be on the roller. I'm going to be tipping it with the paintbrush. Later we'll put the anti-skid on but uh, for now let's get this roof protected and make it a lot cooler inside with the white paint. I made it especially as nice as I could for MP so all she's gonna do now is paint it. So if the roof looks bad we know whose fault it is. Hey! <laughs> yours! This is not the last layer of paint yet, this is just the second. Whenever we start applying the last one, then that's where the anti-skid, the quartz powder is gonna come so we don't slip too much here and fall straight into the skin. The sun, unfortunately, doesn't last forever, but there's always something to do while it rains, don't worry. This roof has been fed. The only thing that has to be fed still is this. It's been here for so long that you can see it's super brown, and we almost resorted to getting the grinder and sanding all the brown away, which would make the fairing even slower because it'd be more to fair. But Toninho's got a huge petrol power hose, which we're gonna turn on and see if we can get all the dirt and dust off before we start fairing it. I am so close to going completely insane when it comes to outside fairing and painting. We've got one more roof to do before I can 
not be here anymore and finally work on cool stuff in the boat, which is different than fairing and sanding. So I'm not going to spend too much time focusing on this. I'm going to go over it very quickly with this big spatula, make sure it's all flat and then someone else can come up one and fair it while I am down in the boat, in the engine, electric, hydraulics, making bathrooms and stuff like that. So this is my, hopefully my last fairing, my last fairing of the boat. <laughs> I was really hoping to get this finished today. However, I was, or I'm a wuss, or I just couldn't do it anymore. I started doing it messier, started really nicely, and then I just wanted to get it finished. So I said, if I give it a break now, continue tomorrow, like less than a quarter to go, way less than a quarter to go. All of it's done. Uh, next steps will be go over with a small spatula, because this is literally just leveling out. Sand it, paint it, and then we'll add the solar panels to it. But. Uh, up just before the blisters this time. Hopefully it doesn't rain tomorrow so I can continue this. I think this is the last square meter of the roof, literally from here to here. And I think I have enough and then I'm never ferrying ever again in my life. This isn't even fairing. I think this is like leveling. The fairing itself is the easy bit, which is sanding and applying some more fairing compound. But this is just literally leveling to make sure there's no dips that water can get stuck in. Okay, I'm so happy, like, I'm so, so relieved, like, so relieved. No, that's fed, that's leveled. Nico's going over now, closing some holes. Uh, yeah, so happy. The next step should be sanding and painting with the primer to then fill all the visible holes, but there were some left. He's going over it. I was supposed to come here yesterday to finish it, except my neck was completely stuck. It still is, and I wasn't supposed to be doing this today, but look at the amount there was still to do, so I ended up doing it anyway. I'm gonna regret it tomorrow. I'll let this cure a bit and then we will just give it a quick sand. But I'm going down to the engine. We do our best to finish one project completely before moving over to the other. However, we do depend on loads of our factors like delivery times, availability of products, and in this case, rain, or in many cases, rain. We want to finish fairing the roof up here, finish the hole, put through holes in, and so on. However, that is not possible when it's raining. So we always look for stuff to do in the meantime that isn't starting a new big project. So it's kind of I'll call them like filling projects. They're small enough to be important, but not big enough to like have to interrupt that to go back to the previous subject. Anyway, to the point, something that has been dangerous and also on our list for a very long time is this engine room hatch. It is very heavy and even standing still here on land, it is dangerous to open and close. So we've got a hand on some uh, pistons. They're about 60 kilos potential each or like strength each. So we're gonna add two pistons on here test it, see if it's good enough, and then hopefully we can open it and close it without falling. I remember MP was, with the previous rope, it snapped. She was pulling, 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 and it snapped, and she almost flew overboard over there, over the back. So anyway, just to show you what it's like. See? It is not easy. And then we have a little hook up there just to prevent it from falling down. It had pistons, but you can see one snapped off. Don't know how, but we're gonna try these pistons out now. Oh, to be honest, for us, when this shuts, mission accomplished. There we go. There we go, we've got it. However, 
this is the only problem the pin isn't made to hold the door which is why we're going to put a second one even though it was easier to lift I'm chuffed with it so i just need to take these me measurements and place it exactly on the other side and we're done These two pistons are now completely ready. I can't say how happy I am with them. Not only is it easier to lift and put down, it's also a lot safer. This isn't mounted to the plywood. There is a wooden baton behind this that is nailed onto, so it's not dependent on the plywood. I'm very happy this is done. It's something that I could do in a bad day, and that's gonna save someone's fingertips. Look at this. One hand, goes all the way down. And of course, the lowest or the most compressed part of the piston is the part where it doesn't push it up anymore. It kind of pulls it down. I don't know if that makes sense. Also, we've got a lock inside there, which we can lock and leave through the inside of the boat through the other hatch. Plumbing, furniture, painting, bearing, pistons, varnishing. That is not bad for an episode. We managed to get a lot done, even though the weather was on our side and off our side. Do you call it like that? And now it's time to wrap this episode and see you guys next week. Before we head off, thank you, Jens, Joseph, Duane, Wiley, James, Ralph, and Greg for clicking that super thanks button. And thank you, David, for joining our patron crew. Welcome to the crew and see you guys all next week. Bye. Don't worry, MP. You can come. Bye. See you next Sunday. No!